Hi, my name is Teresa Dan. I'm one of the psychologists in the Warwick Clinical Psychology Department, and I'd like to talk to you about difficult feelings and how we can better understand and manage them. Neuroscience suggests that we have three main emotion systems. We can represent these with three circles. The first one is threat. This is like our brain's alarm system. It alerts us when we're in danger. So when you feel a surge of fear, when you see a lorry veering down the road at you, or when you feel angry if someone's treated you unfairly, or when you feel disgust when you notice the apple you're about to bite into is rotten, that's your threat system working. It operates on a better safe than sorry principle. From your threat system's perspective, it's doing its job if it alerts you to danger 10 times, but on only one occasion was there a real threat. If we think about the world our ancestors evolved in, the ones that hesitated just a moment to see if that lion really was about to eat them probably wouldn't have made it. Another important thing to know about our threat systems is that because we are a social species, living in a group and being accepted by others is crucial to our survival. Think back again to our ancestors living in the savannah. Being cast out by the group would have been a direct threat to that individual's survival. So our threat systems are also on the lookout for any signs that we might be rejected or otherwise shunned from our social group. The threat system is associated with body chemicals like adrenaline and cortisol, our stress hormones. The natural responses the threat system triggers are our instincts to fight, flight, or freeze. The next system to think about is our drive system. This is our get up and go, pleasure-based system that gives us a sense of reward and excitement when we do something fun or achieve an important goal. Often people's drive system is activated by things like enjoying work, doing sports, engaging in hobbies, going to the theatre or cinema, or going to parties with friends. The drive system is associated with dopamine, our brain signal for reward. The final system is the soothe system. This is also a pleasure-based system, but is more focused on a feeling of slowing down, contentment, feeling safe, and social connectedness. This system is highly associated with being around others that we love and trust, but also anything that can help our minds slow down, such as yoga, physical touch like hugs or massages, taking a bath, meditation, and being around pets. The soothe system is associated with oxytocin, which is the hormone of positive feelings like love and bonding. It's also associated with being better able to problem solve and make decisions. Now you might have guessed that the threat system is very good at being activated all by itself and will quite happily alert us to any possible threats that may or may not actually harm us. The drive and soothe systems, however, need to be tended and nurtured, a bit like a garden. We have to put some effort into their upkeep, and the three systems overall work best when they're balanced. This is because the two pleasure systems, especially soothe, can work to calm down feelings of threat. Physiologically, the soothe system acts like a brake on threat. We can imagine that the threat system is like a bike speeding down a hill, and the soothe system is the handbrake. Now what about everything we're going through now? Well, our threat systems are unsurprisingly feeling rather overactivated now. There have been lots of scary headlines for months, and now the reality is finally and undeniably hitting home. These are lots of fears that our threat system cannot easily resolve because we don't know what the future will look like, and we need to be careful around other people now, which is really unpleasant for a social species. Add to this, and our usual ways of managing threat through drive and soothe have now severely been restricted. Things we do for pleasure, like going to the gym, out for dinner, or just out at all, are now off limits. We may not have as much time or the headspace to be doing things for fun as we juggle working from a home with children in it, or extra long shifts with increasingly overwhelming demands. Likewise, our easiest way of activating soothe, physical proximity with others, is now against the law, and it may feel frivolous to take time for yourself by doing something calming, like taking a bath. This leaves our systems in a rather dire situation. What can we do about this? Acknowledge feelings of threat, but try not to let them run the show. They are real feelings, and they're telling us something important. It's okay to feel upset, frightened, angry, and tearful. But do try to notice where your threat mind is taking you. Are you getting caught up in lots of worries about the future or regrets about the past? This is probably less helpful to what you may need to do in the present moment. One trick is to thank your threat system for its help. 
Thank you, Threatline, for pointing this out to me. But now I'm going to turn down your volume and bring yourself back to the present moment using a grounding technique, such as connecting with your senses. What are three things that you can see, hear, or touch right now? Notice how your body feels in this moment with your feet firmly on the floor and your back in an upright position. Remember that the soothe system acts as a break on threat. It's not just something lovely to do when you have the time. Although this might feel insignificant in the face of all the threats facing us right now, the power of the breath in regulating our systems is really incredible. The trick is to breathe rhythmically, so evenly and smoothly. Counting can be helpful. So for example, one, two, three, four on the in-breath, and one, two, three, four, five, six on the out-breath, with a little pause at the end if that feels right for you. Everyone has a different rhythm and rate that feels soothing for them, so experiment during a calm moment for practice to find out what works for you. Two minutes of rhythmic breathing can do wonders for calming your body and brain and will allow you to think more clearly in that moment. There are some free apps that can help, for example, iBreathe and the Breathing app. What's important to remember is that while Soothe regulates threat, it does not make threat go away, but it does allow you to get into the mindset where you can better make decisions and problem solve what you need to do in that moment to manage that threat. So yes, soothing rhythmic breathing will not in itself resolve anything, but perhaps you will be better able to work out what can help in that moment after you've used it for a few minutes. We do need to distance ourselves from others, but that's only physically. Let's find ways to socially connect even while keeping ourselves safe. Can you have a FaceTime dinner party or a Zoom brunch? Can grandparents read books to the children over Skype? Find ways of staying emotionally connected with friends and family now that we cannot see each other. And remember to also talk about things other than how frightening coronavirus is, perhaps sharing how you've been coping or what you were proud of. And in a safe way, try to find things you can do for fun. Explore how you can have fun and feel a sense of achievement at home. Are there games at home that you haven't played in a long time or a hobby that you've been neglecting? This one may be a tricky one to foster at the moment, but please don't forget it. Make the most of your one outdoor activity per day. Our bodies store those feelings of threat, so releasing them through exercise is really important, as is generally looking after our bodies by eating regularly and sleeping enough too. Our brains do a huge amount of emotional processing at night, so the best gift you can give yourself is enough sleep, at least eight hours. So I hope this has given you some ideas about how our emotions work normally and some of the ways that they might be dysregulated now, as well as some thoughts for rebalancing this. Remember, you're doing an amazing job in dreadful circumstances, and I hope this will help you in taking small steps day by day to look after your emotional well-being.